guys yeah thanks for tuning in uh, this is my second uh, video that I'm making and um, yeah the number one tip that I can give you guys uh, over the last three years of owning a, uh, owning a chainsaw especially the McCullard it's only a, it's only a hardware store brand where I've only paid uh, what was it about $280 or thereabouts and um, yeah, so it's not one. It's not one of those, you know, expensive brands that are pretty close to a thousand bucks. You know, so so you know, like uh, taking that into consideration, that I've actually, you know, um, the number one tip that I can say now, which I, which I wish I knew when when I first purchased the chainsaw, is to actually have some spare chains. I, I've actually now have. Four spare chains. I've got two brand new ones, which you know, having so many is probably unnecessary. But at least have two spare chains, I reckon. So you got your one on the one on the on the chainsaw and two spare ones. And what I do is that you know, like they are always sharp. You know, like uh, so so after you know, like if I've felled a tree or I'm cutting up firewood. You know, once uh, once this chain is sort of blunt and the and the chips uh, uh, that are coming out from underneath the uh, underneath the cover there are uh, uh, basically getting smaller and smaller and turning into like uh, uh, like sawdust rather than rather than like a, uh, like a rolled oats you know like at the moment that's what the chips are looking like just like the you know, before you, you know, as you're making porridge, you know, like the, you got that that raw, the raw oat look, you know, and uh, you know, if you got chips like that, that, that's that's just perfect, and uh, and as long as your chain is sharp, you know, that's uh, that is the that is the number one tip that I can give you. Never let the chain go blunt. You know, like after one fuel tank. And if you're still producing, you know, nice, nice uh, sort of big chips type of thing, and you're not producing much dust at all, you know, I'll probably fill it up and fill it up and obviously replenish the replenish the um, the bar oil tank as well, you know, and uh, and then after that, maybe after that fuel tank, then I'll probably actually take the chain off. And then put a new one on rather than rather than sort of lick it, you know, take a couple of strikes of the file, you know, like a, you know, I, I I found that, you know, like if I'm out in the bush and and uh, I'd rather carry spare chains, and I, I don't want to be mucking around trying to you know file to get a nice uh, to get a nice sharp re resharp the edge again because. Because these teeth can, you know, can be gummed up with the, you know, with the residue of the tree that you're cutting up or whatever. And so, if I'm taking one, two, or three strikes of the file here, you know, to get a nice sharp edge, then on this one, it may be a little bit more gummed up. So, to get this tooth exactly sharp in the same way is that, you know, hypothetically, if I can, you know, hold the file at the same angles and and things like that I may only have to take maybe two strokes or two strikes of the file or even maybe four or five depending how gunk the the, um, the teeth are on this one and and then this one can be slightly different again being gunked up differently and then this one so so each strike of the file you know to get exactly the same type of sharpening with each tooth is just I find it pretty much near enough impossible I, I i cannot do it you know and good on for you guys that can can sharpen and get a nice and get a nice good cutting you know after after you've actually file resharpened the chain you know I, I i can't do it i've tried many times and basically i've actually even made the chain even more blunt because it was just or i find that when i'm cutting it sort of it feels like it's just pulling to the one side you know, as I'm going down the log, and, and I thought, no, nah, you know, like I, that, that's the one thing I just don't want to, 
you know, go through again and you spend a lot of time just trying to sharpen, trying to get everything, you know, exactly perfect and everything like that. And then, you know, then, uh, then all of, and then when you go and make your cut down the log and it's just sort of going to the one side and thinking, oh, great, you know, I've just wasted 10, 15 minutes just, you know, doing something and it's even actually made the chain worse, you know, so. So now what I do is I, I carry, Spare chains, they're already been, they're already been uh, resharpened. You know, these are obviously, uh, they used to be obviously brand new, you know, every chain was brand new at one stage, but then these are, uh, these have been resharpened, you know, by, by a machine, so, you know, and, and I carry, and I've got some spare ones there, which, which I'm, if I'm felling a tree, I'll put on this, brand new chain so I'm not going to be mucking around with a, with a, you know, with a, with actually even a machine sharpened, you know, chain. I'd rather put a brand new one on if I'm going to fell a tree down, so, you know, and, you know, you may think, oh, this may cost a lot of money. Well, you know, like if you pay someone to fell a tree, you're going to be paying, like, a thousand bucks per tree, depending on the size of it, obviously. And if you own just a chainsaw from a hardware store you've only paid maybe up to a couple of hundred dollars rather than a, rather than a, one of those uh, professional brands you know steel or Husqvarna you know where you pay up to a thousand bucks or even more depending on the size of it and um, you know so so what's so what's an extra you know twenty twenty dollars or thirty dollars for a set of, for one set of extra spare chains or or here I've got probably about a hundred bucks worth of spare chains here where you know, I'm still you know I'm still up front than, than if I've purchased a, you know one of those big uh, leading brand professional brand chainsaws so and yeah so my number one tip is to just to when you're cutting keep the chain sharp and once you start to feel like it's taking just a little bit too long to go from one cut to the next and and then it's just sort of getting taking longer and longer and then you oh you know like a, even then I it's usually after maybe the second fuel tank I, I, that's when I I take the chain off and put a new one on so practically I'm always cutting with a with a um, like with a brand new chain you know or or thereabouts you know and uh, yeah, so hopefully I, hopefully I've sort of come across that you know this, you know that this technique that I sort of do that it's it's very convenient when you're out in the bush or or if you've got you know your, your or if you're on a block of land that you're clearing or whatever. Then I, I find that this is the, but for me it is the most convenient way, and hopefully you don't. Uh, that you guys may find find this convenient as well. So yeah, anyway, just give it a go. And uh, as the old saying is, you, if you don't give it a go, you never, never know. You know. Anyway, stay tuned. Cheers. Bye.